This Allah tutorial is about the comparison of the Arrhenius, Brunstedt Lari, and Lewis acid based theories. It is important to be familiar with both definitions of these theories and also relationships and comparison of these theories. In some, <coughs> if it is needed, videos number one, two, and three in this series of online tutorials for acids and bases provide detailed descriptions of the uh, definitions of these three acid-base theories. In summary, based on the Arrhenius acid-base theory proposed in circa 1884, an acid is a producer of H plus or hydrogen ions in water or aqueous solutions. A base is a producer of OH minus or hydroxide ions in water and as base reactions or neutralization reactions are reactions between uh, H plus and OH minus ions produced by Arrhenius acids and bases, where uh, those reactions yield water and salt as their products. Based on the uh, Brenstead Lari acid base theory proposed in 1923. An acid is a proton donor, or more exactly, a hydrogen donor. A base is a proton acceptor, or more exactly, a hydrogen acceptor. And acid base reactions are proton transfer reactions, where protons are transferred from Brennstedt acids to Brennstedt bases. And finally, based on the Lewis acid base uh, theory proposed. Also in 1923, an acid is an electron pair acceptor, a base is an electron pair donor, and acid-base reactions are addition reactions with formation of Lewis adducts. We see that here we have three different acid-base definitions and theories. The question is, how are these different theories are compared with each other? Based on the definitions, we can say that the Arrhenius acid-base theory is a subset of the brennstedt lari acid-base theory and the brennstedt lari acid-base theory itself is a subset of the Lewis acid-base theory. In other words, an Arrhenius acid is also a brennstedt acid. An Arrhenius acid can also be considered as a Brennstedt acid, while on the other hand, a Brennstedt acid isn't necessarily an Arrhenius acid. A Brennstedt acid uh, can't necessarily be considered as an Arrhenius acid. In the case of the Brennstedt and Lewis acids, uh, we can say that a Brennstedt acid is also a Lewis acid, but a Lewis acid isn't necessarily a Brennstedt acid. We can say a similar thing for uh, bases. We can represent these relationships graphically by diagrams like this. For example, consider that this oval shape represents the scope of Arrhenius acid base theory, in which acids are producers of H plus ions and bases are producers of OH minus or hydroxide ions in water aqueous solutions. Then we can represent the scope of the Brennstedt Lari acid base theory by an oval shape like this. Where in Brennstedt Lari acid base theory, acids are proton donors. Bases are proton acceptors. 
in any solvent or medium, in aqueous solutions, in non-aqueous solutions, in gas phase, any medium. Here we should note that the oval shape or the scope of the brain that lie acid base theory includes that of the Arrhenius acid base theory. Then we can represent the scope of the Lewis acid base theory here by an oval shape like this. In Lewis acid base theory, acids are electron pair acceptors and bases are electron pair donors. Here we see that the old shape for the scope of the Lewis acid base theory includes those of the Brennstedt Lari and Arrhenius acid base theories. So we see the diagrams like this, this one. We can show that the Arrhenius acid base theory is a subset of the Brennstedt Lari acid base theory, and the Brennstedt Lari acid base theory is a subset of the Lewis acid base theory. We can justify these comparison and relationships if we consider that an Arrhenius acid is the producer of H plus or hydrogen ions in water. Therefore, an Arrhenius acid acts as a proton donor in water. So, an Arrhenius acid is also a blasted acid. While on the other hand, a blasted acid is a proton donor, maybe in water as the solvent, maybe in many other solvents, in non aqueous solutions, or even maybe in gas phase. So generally, a blasted acid isn't an, an, an Arrhenius acid. In the case of the blasted and Lewis acids, a blasted uh, acid is a proton donor, where those protons donated by a Brennstedt acid can exist alone. They will bind to other chemical species by accepting an electron pair from there, or by acting as a Lewis acid. So we see a Brennstedt acid is always related to the Lewis acid H+, and also acting as a Lewis acid. So we can arguably say that the Brennstedt acid is also a Lewis acid. Or at least whenever we have a Brennstedt acid, also we have a Lewis acid. We can consider a similar discussion for bases. An Arrhenius base is a producer of OH- ions in water, where those OH- ions can react with H plus ions or in fact there are proton acceptors in water. So an Arrhenius base is always related to the Brennstedt base OH minus in water and also acting as a Brennstedt base. So we can say that an Arrhenius base is also a Brennstedt base, or at least whenever we have a Brennstedt, uh, whenever we have an Arrhenius base, we also have a Brennstedt base. In the case of the Brennstedt and Lewis bases, we can say that a Brennstedt base is a proton acceptor. A Brennstedt base does this by providing an electron pair for those protons. Therefore, a Brennstedt base is also an electron pair donor. So a Brennstedt base is also a Lewis acid, a Lewis base. But 
A Lewis base isn't necessarily a Branstad base because a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. A Lewis base may donate its electron pair to uh, H plus like Branstad bases or to many other chemical species. So generally, we can consider Lewis bases as Branstad bases. Discussions like this shows us that why we can say that Arrhenius acid base theory is a subset of branstad lie acid base theory and the branstad lie acid base theory is a subset of the Lewis acid base theory. In other words, Lewis acid base theory is much more general than the branstad lie acid base theory. And the branstad lie acid base theory is much more general than the Arrhenius acid base theory. Or from that side to this side, the Arrhenius acid base theory is much more limited or specific than the branstad lie acid base theory, and this one is much more limited or uh, is more specific than this one. For example, let's consider some reactions. Consider these reactions. NH3 and HCl in aqueous solutions yield NH4Cl. Ammonia and hydrochloric acid react each other to produce ammonium chloride in water. Also consider this reaction, NH3 plus HCl produces NH4Cl. Now, in gas phase, or non-aqueous solutions. Also consider this reaction, NH3 plus BF3, ammonia and boron trichloride yields this amount. Based on the Arrhenius acid base theory, this is an acid base reaction. HCl is the Arrhenius acid here the producer of H plus ion in water, NH3 reduces the concentration of those uh, H plus ions by reacting with them, NH3 is the Arrhenius base here, and this is a neutralization reaction in the Arrhenius acid base theory. On the other hand, both of these two reactions are acid base reactions in Branstad Lowry acid base theory. In both of these reactions, ammonia accepts a proton. It is a proton acceptor here. So, ammonia is a Branstad base in these reactions. And HCl provides that proton. It is a a proton donor here. It is a branched acid here. So, both of these reactions are branched lowry acid base reactions. The third reaction is a Lewis acid base reaction. NH3 acts as an electron pair donor for the, to the boron atom of the boron trifluoride, which acts as an electron pair acceptor. And we have 
the formation of a Lewis atom in this reaction. In addition to this reaction, we have a similar thing in these reactions. In all of these reactions, ammonia acts as an electron pair donor. In this reaction, to the boron atom of the BF3, uh, in this reaction, to the H plus produced by HCl. So, all of these reactions can be considered as Lewis acid based reactions. It is easy to spot uh, similarities in the role of the ammonia and also its reaction partners in these reactions. These examples show us that how Lewis is much more general than the breasted lorry, and the breasted lorry is much more general than the Arrhenius. The Arrhenius acid base theory is limited to water aqueous solutions. But there are many circumstances in chemistry where chemists deal with non aqueous solutions or gas phase. Limitation of acids and bases to water or aqueous solutions in the Arrhenius acid base theory is a serious disadvantage uh, for the Arrhenius acid base theory. We don't have such limitation in the Brensted Lorry acid base theory. In the Brensted Lorry acid base theory, medium can be anything from water aqueous solution to non aqueous solutions and gas phase and any medium. Brensted Lorry acid base theory itself associates acids and bases with transfer of H. It limits acids and bases to the element hydrogen. This is all this is also can be, this can also be considered as a limitation. In the point of view of the uh, Lewis, limiting acids to hydrogen containing compound is as bad as limiting oxidizing agents to oxygen containing compounds. In other words, in oxidation reduction chemistry, it is bad to limit oxidizing agents to oxygen containing substances. And we have a similar thing for acid base reaction, for acid base chemistry in the point of view of the Lewis. So, Lewis omits this limitation and <coughs> based on the uh, Lewis acid base theory, we can also consider reactions like this as acid base reactions. Reactions which necessarily don't have transfer of H plus, like these ones. <clears throat> Here it is also good to mention that from another point of view, limitations by Arrhenius or Brinsted lie as base theories aren't, after all, that much bad. Arrhenius as a base theory limits acids and bases to aqueous solution, to water. This is not, after all, uh, that bad. Uh, water is the most common solvent with unique properties. So, the choice of water in the Arrhenius acid base theory is a strong choice. Blessed Lorry acid base theory limits acids and bases uh, to hydrogen containing substances, limits acids and bases to the element hydrogen. This is also not uh, that bad. Uh, 
A combination of properties make hydrogen unique. For example, consider size, electronegativity, uh, number of inner or non-valence electrons, valence, and other properties of the element hydrogen and compare them with other elements. You will see that hydrogen is unique in many of its properties. Some highlight this by stating that there is something intrinsic about the acidic nature of hydrogen-containing compounds. So we see that the choice of hydrogen in branched lye acid base theory is a strong choice. Anyway, uh, the Arrhenius acid base theory uh, is more limited than the branched lye acid base theory, and this one is more limited than the Lewis one. Here, it is also good uh, to consider the ability of the Arrhenius acid base theory uh, to include all acids and bases in water in aqueous solutions. Are all substances which are considered as acids and bases by a common sense, uh, like similarities uh, in reactions and properties? also considered as acids or bases by the Arrhenius acid base theory? Let's discuss this by an example. Consider sodium hydroxide and ammonia in aqueous solutions. For them, we can have these reactions. Sodium hydroxide has OH- or hydroxides in its structure and it can release those OH- uh, to water by ionic dissociation. NH3 has no OH in its formula or no OH- in its structure, but it can produce OH- ions in aqueous solutions by this reaction. Although a very small fraction of ammonia molecules participate in this reaction, so small that usually we can neglect the change of the concentration of ammonia due to this reaction. Anyway, ammonia can produce OH- ions in aqueous solutions by this reaction. On the other hand, both of them, sodium hydroxide and ammonia, can neutralize well hydrochloric acid in the face of the enough uh, HCl, none of them will remain. So here we see similarities in properties and reactions of sodium hydroxide and ammonia. And by common sense, we consider ammonia as a base in water. Now, if we define an Arrhenius base as a substance which has OH in its formula and releases 
those OAs to water by ionic dissociation, then ammonia can be considered as an Arrhenius base because this doesn't have any OH in its formula. But if we consider an Arrhenius base as a substance which can produce OH minus in water, which can increase the concentration of OH minus in or decrease the concentration of H plus in water by any means, then we can con also consider ammonia as a base, as an Arrhenius base in water. So the second approach here uh, seems to be better, but some criticize this by stating that this is not the original Arrhenius acid base theory, where Arrhenius is famous for his works on ionic dissociation of ionic compounds and salts, like sodium hydroxide. Anyway, I don't think this is a great deal after all. But some consider this also as a limitation for the Arrhenius acid base theory and state that Arrhenius acid base theory doesn't include all acids and bases in water or aqueous solutions correctly. Uh, it doesn't give us all acids and bases in aqueous solutions. So this is the comparison of the Arrhenius, Benz-Bedlari and Lewis acid-based theories and based on discussions like this, we can see why we usually see the Arrhenius acid-based uh, theory in elementary discussions in pre-high school and high school textbooks while on the other hand we usually see the Benz-Bedlari and Lewis acid based theories in more advanced textbooks uh, like university textbooks and so on. <clears throat> in general, uh, Lewis acid based theory is much more general than the Brenstead Lie acid based theory, and the Brenstead Lie acid based theory is much more general than the Arrhenius acid based theory. A more general theory can be used in more cases, in more circumstances. But this is a serious advantage for a more general theory. But instead, more cases are usually associated with less similarity, more complexity, requirement of more knowledge to analyze uh, data etc. Or in simple words, a more general theory is broader but instead harder to use, especially for deep analysis. We can consider a similar discussion for Arrhenius, Brenstead Lie and Lewis acid based theories. This may justify why we have Arrhenius acid based theory in elementary discussions, while we have uh, Brenstead Lari or Lewis acid based theories in more advanced uh, discussions. Usage of the Brenstead Lari and Lewis acid based theories uh, is very common in modern chemistry. In some areas, for example, calculation of H plus ions in solvents in analytical chemistry, we prefer to use the Brenstead Lie acid base theory. While in other areas, like discussion about the electrophilic or nucleophilic reactions in organic chemistry, uh, we prefer to use the Lewis acid base theory. This is the 
End of this online tutorial. I hope you find it useful.